When I first started working with Linus in 2011, that dates this whole thing a little bit, I'm a little old, I was a major keyboard fanboy. If you check out this video, Linus shows off my old mineral oil rig, a big part of the reason I got the job I'm literally working right now. In that video, he shows off a customized keyboard that I had loved. Actually, I still love it, and it's still my daily driver. I recently made a video fixing it, which can be found up here as well. Since then, however, the whole computer hardware industry has gone absolutely insane over keyboards. The number of new keyboards on the market is nuts, and it's uh, more than a little bit confusing and overwhelming. For instance, Newegg.com has 1,220 products listed under gaming keyboards. Oh my god. And there's only so many times you can make a video on a keyboard that has, well, yes, Cherry MX switches, most likely in the brown or red variety, and some form of backlighting. But, just in case you do happen to miss those, I've got two of them here today. The G610 Orion with Cherry MX brown switches, and the G610 Orion with Cherry MX red switches. Or if your tastes are a little more Japanese than German, we have the G810 Orion Spectrum, a fully RGB keyboard that features Romer G switches, and its little spunky brother, the 10 keyless G410 Atlas Spectrum, featuring full RGB and Romer G switches. With all of that out of the way, let's check out some keyboards, shall we? Let's start with the most interesting keyboard, that would probably be the G810 Orion Spectrum. Back in 2014, Linus made a video about the G910 and had a lot to say about the Romer G switches. A lot of his messaging, which I actually completely agree with, uh, is him pointing out things like the shorter, more gaming-oriented actuation distance and the raw performance of the switch itself, both of which are absolutely awesome. He also points out that the feeling may not quite be as satisfying as a Cherry MX switch due to the mushy compression feeling of bottoming them out. That last point is something I would like to address. While I completely agree that they feel mushy to bottom out, and I'm definitely someone who bottoms out his keys, if you force yourself to not bottom the switches out, and just press them to slightly beyond the actuation point, which is technically as far as you need to go, and is technically the best way to do it, they actually feel pretty great. Super responsive, super fast, wonderful switches, not for me personally, because I slam my fingers down and bottom out keys like a dummy, but if you can control your key presses better and half press, this may be great for you. The biggest complaint Linus had, and one of the biggest complaints the community as a whole had, was their keycaps. They did some super weird stuff with those, but as the problem is solved on the G810, I won't focus on it anymore. I'll just leave it with, the problem is solved. How did they do this? Well, they used standard style keycaps. That's it. Thanks for being humble, Logitech. That was exactly what people wanted, and you delivered. That's all there is to say. Besides all that, it features 26 key rollover, which should be more than enough for anyone other than that one dude who finds it really entertaining to see how many inputs he can have when he tries to attempt typing on the keyboard with his entire butt, but uh, it's probably fine. It also features three-step angle adjustment for your varying keyboard angle and height needs, five large rubber feet on the bottom to keep it from sliding around, some rather controversial media control buttons because they're circles, not squares. I personally don't really care, but have seen a number of comments about them, so just be aware of that. My biggest remark on the media keys is that they feel actually pretty great to press. They're super tactile and responsive, making them feel kind of like the keys you expect to feel on a receiver, which is kind of cool considering their media functions. The build quality is great with what must be some form of metal plate running through the body, making it feel very sturdy and solid. And it comes with the Logitech gaming software that you were probably expecting for me to bring up like right now, which allows you to intricately macro bind different keys on your keyboards, mainly the F keys. Uh, a lovely light control, which I must say looks awesome on these keyboards because of the Romer G light stem. It looks very nice and diffuse and whatnot. Customizable gaming mode button and a key press heat map, which is actually super cool. I like that kind of stuff. The only thing really lacking from this keyboard, in my opinion, is an included wrist rest. 
Most of its competitors have one. It feels a bit lacking in that department. I know the previous wrist rest wasn't winning a ton of awards. People didn't like the gaming, only half of it really being their style, but they, they could have included something. The G410 Atlas Spectrum, despite its name, is in a smaller 10 keyless package, but other than that, is much of the same. It doesn't seem to contain a metal plate and feels kind of flimsy and light, which I wasn't a fan of, largely, again, because I bottom out keys like a dummy. So I don't know if that means much to you. The awesome lighting, the Romer G switches, the more standardized keycaps, all of those were there, and it does include a wrist rest, but it's the gaming wrist rest that the G910 had, so you may not be super interested in that. Or you will, that's fine too. The other two keyboards, both bearing the name G610 Orion, are basically the G810, but with only backlighting for white colors, cherry brown and cherry red MX switches respectively, and that's about all there is to say about them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's fine, it just kind of feels like eating a taco versus nachos and seven layer dip. Lots of the same ingredients, but oriented in a slightly different way, creating a different effect. So there, that's the current state of Logitech keyboards. Hopefully knowledge on these four gives you a better grasp on the apparently 1,220 currently available keyboards. Rackspace is a top tier managed cloud computing company. They have dedicated storage options to meet your performance, security, and network capacity and compliance needs. They're backed by fanatical support with 24-7, 365, whatever you need kind of support. Rackspace is inviting you to their interactive deep dive sessions. They take an hour every week or two to discuss the benefits of dedicated solutions and their place in a cloud world. They have upcoming events and recorded Google Hangouts available on top Topics from security to compliance to performance and cost, tons of different stuff. They typically do three sessions per month, and they will also provide you with downloads to things like reference architectures, ebooks, and even white papers on the session's landing pages. It's live and active participation. Go ask your questions and interact with them. Go check out their upcoming and past hangouts that have been on topics such as security and compliance and that other stuff that we talked about earlier. See details in the video description down below and check it out. Thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us using our Amazon affiliate code, which is super awesome. Buying a cool t-shirt like this one on like Teespring or whatever. Uh, following other channels, Tech Quickie, Channel Super Fun, both absolutely fantastic channels. Going on the forum, becoming a member at all, super cool, great community, or becoming a contributor, which is great as well. It's up to you, just, you know, you can just talk or you can contribute and talk or you can tr contribute and not talk, or you can just lurk. It's, lurkers are great too. Check out this video, which is the keyboard keycap maintenance guide. That thing has so many views, <laughs> which is cool because it took a long time to make. There you go.